Well, guys, James is going to carry on with his Facebook Live, so to see if those cheetah decide to maybe get up and start hunting again. And in the meantime, we're still with Tingana. We've had an absolute torrid time trying to keep up with him. He's taken us through hell and back. He went past the dead mongoose, sniffed it, and decided that wasn't for him, and then left it alone, and is now carrying on. And like I say, it really is dense. It's thick. It's been a bit of a torrid time trying to actually keep up with him at the moment. So we're going to try and carry on. Although where he's heading now is at least into a fairly more pleasant part. Oh, no, now he's decided to stop. You can just see a little tip of the tail as it's going around the bush. So we'll try and follow him through there. There's either two paths. He's either going to drop down into the Mulawati or he's going to go carry on towards Twin Dams. But I think Mulawati is eventually where we're going to end up. Now there are some people that are taking photographs. So we're just waiting for them to have their photographs and get the chance to see him. And once he moves off, then we'll try and follow him. Now, Megs, I heard you say vet, but I didn't hear the rest of the question because I was just thinking about something else. And my brain is a bit slow this afternoon. Yes, Yvette, leopards are solitary hunters, so you'll find that they will move around. They pretty much are solitary cats, and so Tingana is going to hunt all by himself. He's not going to use anybody else to hunt, so he's going to try and do his very best to hunt all on his own. Now, I'm going to try to see if I can't find another way around, because, I, like I say, don't want to ruin these guys' photographs. But at the same time, we can't just sit and stare at a bush while they all see a leopard. So we're going to try and just reposition now it seems as though every time you guys are with us we can't get a visual of Tingana every time you're not with us he lies down and we just watch him ever for so long just now he was down for about 10 minutes and we were watching him beautifully in the sort of light and he was just sitting and he was almost eye level it was really very beautiful so Seb you can see him eh? is he going is he mobile again You want to stay right here? Yeah. Do you not think let's go forward while we can, while he's still... Oh, this is such thick bush. There we go. So he's actually sitting, which is, means that if we can get here, then that is absolutely perfect. How's that, Seb? Oh, my pleasure. So you can see he's just watching what's going on and he's definitely seen something. What it is, I'm not quite sure. But he's on the hunt. He's a hungry boy at the moment. So whatever it is, I'm sure he's looking to try and take advantage of that sun starting to set now. It's that time of the day where you'll find that leopards will spend a vast majority of their time trying to hunt and trying to go after whatever is in the general vicinity. And this is a great area for things like Nyala. You can see, look how he's sniffing. But isn't that beautiful? He's got such an incredible stare on him. It's very, very intimidating, that's for sure. What have you seen? I can't see what he's seen, but I'm sure it's something like a Nyala or a Bushbuck, given where we are. We're right up on the banks of the Mulawati at the moment, and that's perfect. Look how he's moving. stalk mode. Isn't this cool? He's definitely seen something. Look how he's using the car to sneak around in front. There he goes just in front of us and he's creeping down underneath the foliage and that's that typical leopard crawl that he's got going. I have no idea what he's busy hunting but whatever it is he's very keen on it. That's for sure. There he is. Look at how he places his paws very, very gently. And the back foot will go exactly where that front foot was so as that they don't make too much noise. It's called a direct register. And it's the way that they walk is to try and eliminate noise. So you'll see Kudu, Nyala, Bushbuck, they walk in a similar fashion. Now he's sitting down. 
What has he seen? I can see Franklin's moving around there. Surely he's not hunting Franklin's. Seb, I'll try reposition for you now. Give me two seconds. I also don't want to spoil his hunt, whatever he is, but I've got a nice clear gap here, so it should be fine without chasing anything away. And the fact that he's sat down possibly means that he's just watching what's going on. So from cheetah hunting to the other spotted cat that's also hunting. Oh, there's an impala right here, Seb. There's impalas right, right here. So I'm gonna turn off here. I don't wanna go any further, but the impala's just in front there. So it's just through that little thicket. You can just see its face looking at us. You see the eye there? So that's the impala. Look at that camouflage. Great camo work, Seb. That's beautiful. How cool is that? And Tingana's just to my left. So the impala has no idea that Tingana is here. And he's low and flat to the ground. The impala is a bit kind of worried about what's going on. So we're going to try and sit quietly as possible and hope that we don't attract too much attention. Obviously the impala is looking at us because it can see the vehicle. It's not sure that anything's going on. Tingana, keep your tail down. His tail's flicking up every now and then with excitement. So just keep your tail down and you'll have this as it's getting darker, so the favor is going more and more and more into Tingana's sort of side of things. But Impala has no idea that this leopard is here. It's sitting, just watching and trying to look around. It, I'm sure, much like the Nyala, thinks something is up, but it's just not 100% sure what it is just yet. And if that impala turns its back, that's what Tingana wants, is that he can then get into this deep thicket that's between us and the impala itself, and he can use that to his advantage. Ricky, you say, wow, look at that concentration. Exactly, he is really concentrating, and that impala is actually starting to feed now. Its head is down, it's not concentrating at all and it's turning its back towards Tingana which is perfect that's exactly what we need we need that to happen because then Tingana's got a chance to creep in and get a little bit closer but you can see he's just watching Angeline, you say this is such an awesome representation of how leopards hunt. Well, we are so fortunate, Angeline, to watch this. This is not something that you witness every day. This impala is moving now. It's moving into the deeper, denser thicket. And that might be a bad move for this impala. I think the impala is a bit... Look, look, Tingana's up and moving. So he's noticed that the impala is now moving. There we go. You see, he's using the cover of the bush to get behind this impala. I wonder if he's going to get this right. See, we've lost visual of him now because he's gone behind the thickets and I can't see him anymore. But the Impala and him are both right behind you and I don't want to move because I don't want to spoil it for either one of these individuals. We're trying to let them both have as equal opportunity as possible. I can see Tingana's spots and I can see the Impala coming out on the right here. So the Impala is coming right past our car. Tingana is not far behind him and the Impala has no idea that Tingana is coming. So Tingana will probably appear in the next, I would say, 15 seconds or so. He's going to start coming out, but he's going to have to get a move on if he's to catch up with that Impala. Wow, this is exciting, isn't it? It's always amazing when you're in the thickets with these animals and you're trying to see and watch what's going on. It really is special. So even though we can't see anything, there's this atmosphere in the air. It's almost as though you could cut it with a knife as this leopard is following this impala through these thickets. Now he should appear there somewhere. He might have stopped just to work out his next move because that impala is going to a lot more open section than what it currently is in at the moment. Louise, you're wondering what the success rate is for leopard hunts. Well, Louise, it's a very low success rate, unfortunately. Most leopards will only kill about 30 to 40 percent of the time that they actually hunt. So there's a lot of times that they fail. We've seen him already run past Nyala, and now he's after these impalas. 
And the chance now is almost gone. If he had come round the other way, he chose the wrong side. If Tingana had come through the front side in front of our car and sat right by the edge of this thicket, that Impala would have ran straight into him. Instead, he went round and tried to follow the Impala through, and that's where he's made a mistake, unfortunately. But we'll try and see if we can find him again quickly, because I don't want to lose sight of him before he disappears on us again, like he did with the Nyala. I can't see the Impala anymore as well. The Impala seems to have moved. The Impalas are clever. They know at this time of the day that there are predators lurking and that means that they need to get into more open clearings where they can not get caught by a lurking predator in the thicket. Now, where is Tingana? The last time I saw him he was right here. There he is. Oh, Beard, you say you're on the edge of the seat. Well, I think Tingana, unfortunately, has blown this hunt. I think he went the wrong way, like I say, because I can see the Impala is drifting now over a big open clearing, and Tingana is actually lying down. He's no longer stalking. He's just sitting here, so I'm going to try and get us in. 